how do you measure how far down or estimate how far down we will go once breaking this pattern? What is going on guys? One day after the Bitcoin Cash hash war has started and seemingly ended, there are no real winners as the title of this article so accurately states. There were two possible outcomes. Either we'd get no fork coin or we'd have two new fork coins. I think everybody knew uh, that scenario number two was the more likely one and some exchanges including Binance are now supporting both forks. You'll see here that Poloniex does as well. They actually had pre-fork trading on, on Poloniex. But now we have two fork coins. Nobody knows what the hell the purpose of, of each of them is. Obviously, there are technical differences between both, and they are incompatible. But in terms of why we need two Bitcoin Cash coins, uh, it just seems like a very petty guerrilla war that that has started this. Now, a few people have been saying that you know this is not in the spirit of decentralization and this you know further proves that coins or, or that the crypto market that claims to be decentralized is actually really centralized no i mean it, it technically this is in the spirit of decentralization it's just that the groups that decided to fork are either unaware or tone deaf to the influence that they wield on the crypto community right so roger ver and craig wright they, I'm sure they, they are aware, uh, but they are tone deaf to the fact that their cult of personalities are driving some of these decisions. Now, I say it is in the spirit of decentralization because groups should be able to initiate forks based on consensus, and then miners can choose whether to support the fork or not, right? It's, it's up to the miners to, to choose. But it has the appearance of authoritarianism because you do have these two separate cult of personalities that are waging guerrilla wars and and it seems like even though maybe the initial intention might have been uh, technical or technological it just seems like it it was taken to a place of personal vendettas against one another and and that is not really in the spirit of decentralization but the act uh, the act of forking and the act of you know, having miners decide which fork to support, that is pure decentralization, right? I mean, that you don't see that in, in any money system in the world currently. But again, going back to this article, there are no real winners because we're left with two fork coins and, you know, they, they both separately, they, they both have different markets and miners are going to have to, to now are vying for deciding which one to support. And if you read through the details of this article, uh, miners are actually losing money by mining both of these forks. And it remains to be seen which network will surface as the dominant chain, right? It's going to it's going to be a long drawn out battle, which most of the crypto community sees as frankly unproductive right so anyway that is the update with uh, bitcoin cash two coins some exchanges are supporting it some aren't find out which ones if you're using a certain exchange find out if they do uh, in terms of price action i'm staying away from this i there's really no you know now that now that it has forked there's really no indication of what's going to be driving the price action and it can change day by day depending on the news and you know what this person tweets versus that person and and you know it's it's yeah i mean it's it's unnecessary. Anyway, let me pause real quick and say that Ledger is actually running a Black Friday sale from now until the 21st. It's technically not a Black Friday sale, but we're just calling it that because we're selfish Americans and we think the whole world revolves around Thanksgiving. But it's actually running from from now until uh, the 21st. You get 20% off two Ledger Nano S's and 30% off three. I personally don't think you need three, but I personally have two myself because I use one as a backup. And what better way to distinguish your Ledger Nanos than by buying one of these fancy fucking colors? <laughs> Anyway, Ledger Nano even has a an article on their site that tells you how to back up your Ledger Nano to another Ledger Nano device. You can keep one in a bank vault and one at home or, or wherever, but you can keep them in separate locations so that you do have a backup in case one gets destroyed. You can find a link 
to the Ledger Nano in the description below. All right, so let us jump right into the analysis for the day. So looking at BTC, um, let me just hide this real quick. So all of you know by now about this, you know, looming or not looming, but it's it's actually here. But this descending triangle that has been in play since practically since the, the beginning of the year. Now, there's something I want to say about this, right? A descending triangle is typically a continuation pattern and continuation patterns. You don't usually measure them for that long, right? It's just convenient because this pattern has been so consistent for so long. But typically, you want to measure a descending triangle pattern within three months or so because it is a continuation pattern. And you'll see here that obviously we broke the support of the descending triangle. I'm going to bring back the other trend lines that I hid, and I'll show you why in a second. So if you look at this, this is a, a smaller descending triangle that emanates from the beginning of September, which is more realistic of a continuation pattern because of the the length of the actual pattern right and obviously we broke down now in classical technical analysis there are a couple of things with this pattern one it it is definitely a bearish pattern right you almost always break to the downside two when you break to the downside you have to confirm it with volume right an increase in volume confirms that this downside break is valid and you see here i don't know how well you could see it but you'll see here that we do have an increase in volume that coincides with this downside break three how do you measure how far down or estimate how far down we will go once breaking this pattern well Again, in classical technical analysis, when you have a descending triangle like this, you measure from the widest point of, of the descending triangle to where the, the support happened and, and the breakdown thereafter, right? So in this case, if you have the top of this descending triangle, it's at around 7,400, and the support is at around 6,122. So essentially what you would do is subtract 6122 from 7400 and what you're left with is 1278 now this is what you would subtract from the downside break so 1278 minus 6122 and you're left with 4844 so that is a good way to project where you are headed or where your your next support level is obviously you can have multiple support and resistance levels using different indicators such as the fibonacci retracement tool setting your own support and resistance based on historical levels uh etc cetera, etc cetera. but that is a a great way to project a realistic support level right obviously you can break below that and you can also get to a scenario where you never hit that but 4844 is realistic based on the calculations and the moves we are currently at 5536 that means we have some ways to go before hitting 4800 but it is a realistic level based on what has currently happened now if we take a macro view of btc this is the monthly chart going all the way back to 2011. a couple of things to point out here let me just unhide these things that i drew on <clears throat> you'll see that in terms of length of time and decline in price that this bear market here lasted 22 bars right or 669 days now if you project that onto the current move and these moves look very similar by the way again obviously we're not going to get exactly the same time span and the same price drop but it is a good guide like what else are you going to go off of right you just want to know what is possible so that you can react accordingly that is the point of technical analysis it's not to predict an exact price or an exact movement or try to prove to people that you somehow guessed the the, the correct price action to, to the dollar it's just so that you have a guide to know how to react as a trader. That is all you are looking for. So if you span this current bear market out 22 bars or 669 days and measure a similar price drop to what we saw in this bear market here, you'll see that we can actually get to 2800 while still maintaining this trend right if we get to 2800 we'll still be on this uptrend going all the way back to 2011 and we will be respecting the support of this uptrend now i don't i'm not saying we're going to get there at all but this is a market and you have to keep into perspective that these things are realistic all right so where do we go from here looking back at the four hour you could see that we are creating after the the downside break of the descending triangle we're creating 
trading what looks to be a sort of a bear flag right here on the four hour chart. And obviously if you zoom in to, you know, shorter time increments, you could see it even, even better, right? So it looks like we're creating a bear flag on the shorter increments or the shorter time frames. Now, obviously this is a bearish pattern and we tend to see a decline from here. Another thing with descending triangles though, is sometimes we see a retest of the resistance level, the former support, which became resistance, and we could see a breakdown, uh, you know, another breakdown from there. You can make a case depending on volume and momentum for shorting once we get back up to this resistance level but you'll have to make that determination after assessing what the price action and momentum looks like. And of course, you can always return, you know, you can always uh, break test resistance and break it. And now that resistance becomes support again, and we will be forming a new pattern. But these descending triangles, they, they rarely ever fail when they are this solid, right? Obviously, as we said, this one goes all the way back to September, but the larger descending triangle pattern has really been in place since the beginning of the year. I will be monitoring this potential short though if we go back to retest resistance. If you want access to the trade alerts, including shorts and longs, link is in the description. All right, let us take a look at XRP real quick. So looking at XRP, this is on the one day chart. Uh, we saw an ascending triangle, a breakout from that, and it looks to be forming another ascending triangle recently uh, since the beginning of November. It is one of the coins that actually held up really well during this crash. And if you look at a shorter time frame, like the four hour, you'll see that we are testing this resistance of about 85.20 sats. I did put in a small short on XRP that I already limit closed overnight for 10X leverage once we started testing this resistance again. And I saw that volume was waning while trying to test this resistance. It was a pretty quick and dirty play, I should say. And I have no problem making risky plays as long as that risk is measured and it constitutes a known percentage of your portfolio. A lot of people initiate trades not knowing how much of their portfolio that trade constitutes, right? So on, on a trade like a, a short, a, a short term short on XRP, they might go all in uh, with all the funds that they have to trade or go with half of the funds that they have to trade because they're looking for maximum profit, but you're also risking a lot more to do that. So as long as your risks are measured, you could engage in risky trades, but you know, you have to know how to mitigate those and how to exit if those trades don't work work out. But you will see this repeating pattern on XRP here with good volume, a test of support back down, another round of good volume, a test of support, and we will mo most likely head back down if we don't get accompanying volume to keep this going. Look out for the Fib retracement levels to know when to get back in. I will send a re-entry alert out in the trade alerts, depending on how XRP responds to these levels. Another interesting coin I'm looking at, one which we made some pretty good profits earlier in the year, uh, actually earlier, you know, within the last couple of months is BAT, obviously breaking out of this wedge pattern here and then forming a bull flag, breaking out of that positively, hitting, going all the way up to uh, almost 5,900 sats last week. And now we have seen a retrace all the way back down to about 34.77 sats. And now we are hitting the 0.236 again on the way up. I'm not looking to make too many trades in a bear market or a crash. You can accumulate for, for the long term, right? That is always a safe play is to, to buy. And this is one thing. From my last video, a lot of you interpreted it as if I was against hodling. I'm not against hodling if you buy undervalued assets or you're buying the dip, right? Buying in the red. What I argued against was buying at the high and then holding that, watching your portfolio bleed 80%, 90% without doing anything about it. That is what I am against, right? Like hamstringing yourself for no reason. But no, I hot, buying for the long term is definitely a profitable strategy if you have the patience and if you're buying at on the dip. So in, in market crashes, you have a few options, right? You can either remain fully parked in cash, which is also a position, don't forget that, or you can accumulate for the long term since everything is cheap and undervalued. Or you can do a mixture of both, uh, you know, long term accumulation and some swing trades to keep to keep things interesting as long as you mitigate the risks of those swing trades and you're not going all in when the volatility and price direction are uncertain, right? 
Anyway, that is it for today's analysis. I won't be going over news items because there is not really that much news besides the update that I gave you on the Bitcoin Cash Saga. But go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment if you have a question or a comment or a disagreement or an agreement. Conversely, you can hit me up on the Discord. Sign up. Link is in the description if you want access to the trade alerts. If you need help with your technical analysis or need one-on-one -on -one coaching slash tutoring, that link is also in the description. As always, crypto peeps, stay safe out there. Peace. <laughs>